All right, we're back with another album ranking video. Today we're covering my favorite band of all times, so I've been looking forward to doing this one, The Cult. I'm Foxy Sellers, and this is my channel dedicated to storytelling in multiple artistic mediums. If you're one of those people that fancy fables, tall tales, and high adventure, then please go ahead, click the subscribe, click like. You can go ahead and comment. You'll get keyed into stuff just like this. Today we're covering music. It's all fucking heavy spiritual shit, people. Okay, so the cult. Cult, I mean, need I say again, they are my favorite band. I've just always been blown away from the second I first heard them. From the second I went, I went and saw the, the Sonic Temple concert at the Boston Garden when I was a kid, and it has had a lasting impression on me that is unflappable. I can't, I mean, every single cult song I ever hear, I'm like, it's still the cult, even if it's an okay song, I still love it. So this isn't my first album ranking video. I did Van Halen to start off, then I did ACDC, and then Led Zeppelin, and now I'm doing the cult. My method for doing so, methodical, mathematical. I really just take every song on every album and I rank it from, I, I give it a rating of one to five. And then I take the average of that and which al whichever album had the highest average, that's your best album. And I rank them from worst to best. But I do have tiebreakers, so whichever has the most fives or whichever has the biggest bang for the buck and that usually benefits the album that has the most songs on it. But um, you got to have a third tiebreaker if you're going to have anything. So there you have it. Okay, so The Cult. The Cult actually has some very interesting and unique influences um, to get started. And, and then they evolved over time. So initially when they came out, they were very like post-punk. They had like a... Uh, um, a new wave sound to them, but you know, still a little bit of punk to them. Very, very like British rock at the time. This is the early 80s. And early on, you could hear the influence of, say, um, you know, Joy Division or The Cure. But the, you know, over time, oh, and they always had uh, the, the vocaling sounds of The Doors. Ian Asbury, the lead singer, was always heavily influenced by The Doors. That stayed tried and true the whole way through, but as they evolved, they became more and more rock. They dropped that like slight clash with mixed with new wave sound by their third album, and they were a rock and roll band through and through from then on. And if you get to their later albums, they became hard, hard rock. They, they, they had a very specific sound for their last, I don't know, seven or eight albums. The Cult has 11 studio albums. I'm only including their studio albums with unique recordings on it. Um, they do have a box set called Rare Cult. It's got a whole bunch of unique stuff on it, so I, I recommend you checking that out. But for this video, we're focused only on their studio albums, and we're gonna start off with, unfortunately, their worst album. Still a good album, it's The Cult, and it's got The Cult songs all the way through it, and that is Under the Midnight Sun, came out in 2022, so it is their most recent album. The only reason, I mean, it doesn't have any fives on it, but it's just got, it's a lot of threes and fours, so it's just, you know, a good album, a lot of like, better than average songs throughout. Just unfortunately that brought it down its average. This has an average song score of 3.25. It does not have any fives on it. And it has a bang for your buck of 26 points. You know, I think when I, when I first listen to a cult album, I'm like, oh yeah, I love it. And then I give it a second listen and then some stuff really starts to resonate. And this one upon like third, fifth, seventh listen, I'm kind of like, yeah, there's nothing really special about this album, and it was just one of the underwhelming surprises of anything they've ever put up. Number 10, Choice of Weapon. This was their 2012 album. It was their follow-up to Born Into This. It had an average song score of 3.29. It actually has three fives on it. And it had a total bang for the buck of 46. Now, this one has the most tracks on it with 14. So that explains the bang for the buck. Choice of Weapon, th this one's interesting in that they released an alternative version of this where it was kind of like they did different versions of the song. The alternative version of the, and it's called Weapon of Choice is the alternative. Um, it, it's not better. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's got some interesting different takes on some of the songs, but Choice of Weapon is better. 
Um, it still falls 10th on the list. Nothing special about it, but it, you know, it came out in 2012. I would say a lot of their 2000 albums ish are definitely their lesser, lesser, a lesser known and B um, the, the caliber of them isn't as good, but they do have some good ones in the, in the 2000s. So, you know, don't count it out. Number nine, Ceremony. Ceremony has an average song score of 3.3. And it does have two fives on it. It has a bang for your buck of 38. Ceremony. Now, Ceremony is one I remember when this came out. I had just seen Sonic Temple in concert a couple of years before this. Was a huge cult fan already. Ceremony came out and Ceremony has a, you know, a couple of really great songs on it. It's got two fives um, in Wonderland and Ceremony. And I, I absolutely love those. And then some of the, the in-between tracks, um, you know, there's some twos and, and, you know, a couple of threes in there. It just isn't one of their strong albums. And it just has so many weak tracks that that's why this one's ranked ninth. Number eight is Hidden City. Hidden City is one of the, it's the second to last album that's out, the, the second to most recent album, I should say. It has a song average of 3.33, and it has three fives on it. So it's, you know, it's moving up there. It has a bang for your buck of 40. Uh, first song right out of the gate is, is, is a five. It's got, you know, a couple in the middle there somewhere. It's got some twos that brought this one down. It's... As a whole, it's just not that great of an album. It just does have some good songs on it. Sort of like Ceremony. seven born into this which is their 2007 album has an average song score of 3.7 and it has three fives on it has a total bang for your buck of 37 points it's uh, a little ways after they had done beyond good and evil and it's it's got some good stuff on it i mean it's got it's got three fives on it so um there's, there's a handful in there that are really good it's got Two twos that kind of brought it down a little bit. You know, Dirty Little rock star, which is great. Tiger in the Sun, kind of an unknown song that I don't think people realize, but it almost has that like soul asylum sound to it. Not the band, but the the cult song from Sonic Temple, uh, Soul Asylum. Um, but th this has that same kind of like nifty little groove to it, almost Led Zeppelin-esque. It's got illuminated sound of destruction really comes in hard, too. So th this has got some good shit on it. Oh, oh, and then Holy Mountain, a uh, little out of place, but it, it it sounds like a Johnny Cash song. And for those of you that are not familiar with this album um, or not familiar with the cults or anything and like Johnny Cash, go and listen to Holy Mountain on Born Into This, The Cult. It, it'll it'll surprise you. You're like, that's The Cult? Really? It, it, it's, you know, it's a kind of almost like an acoustic song that they did on the side, but it's such a good tune. Number six is their debut album, Dreamtime. It has an average song score of 3.85. And it has three fives on it as a total bang for the buck of 50 points and that's because we're talking about a lot of threes and a lot of fours here it, it's got 13 tracks on it so it, it, it all kinds of adds up now Dreamtime, you know I, I the cult initially was a band called the southern death cult uh, the only member of the band at the time though was ian asbury they didn't have billy duffy at the time and the Southern Death Cult, I like, believe, is named after some sort of like Tennessee or Kentucky Native American death tribe of some sort. Um, but it, it's uh, it was something that he was heavily influenced in, historically speaking, as a kid. And then, you know, he 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 kind of went with that in that direction with the, his band. 
they from the Southern Death Cult, they formed what was called the Death Cult, which was just they dropped the Southern. That's when they met Billy Duffy. That's the sound that was really the the intro to Dreamtime. Dreamtime's technically their debut album because they're technically the cult at that point. They had dropped Death Cult, but the the Death Cult album was similar, uh, similar sound and whatnot. I just didn't include it as part of this list. Now, Dreamtime has some really great tracks. I mean, some they, they're still within like that new age punk sound a little bit, uh, but and 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 you know not super hardcore. I mean, they've got a punk sound to them. But some of the songs, like Going West, Going West is probably one of my favorite songs of theirs, like as far as their old stuff. And it it kills. Dreamtime's a great song. And then Horse Nation, 83rd Dream. There's just, there's a lot of really good, great tracks on this. This is one of those albums where I, I feel like it's kind of more cohesive. Like all of the songs on it have a sound. They have other albums like that too. But this one very specifically has a different sound and it's all the way through. It's almost kind of like if... You two were a bunch of badasses compared to like their some of their their earlier albums. Number five on the list, and I'm surprised this falls as low as it does, is Electric. That's their 1987 album, their first real hard rock sounding album, and that's thanks to Rick Rubin. He produced the album at the time and listened to what they had with what was called the Peace album, uh, the Peace album was kind of a follow-up to love they want to stay in the tradition of that and they recorded all the songs for it there just was there was something missing and when rick rubin got a hold of it he listened to it and he's like okay you guys have a, a hard rock sound but you're not applying it and here's what it should sound like boom you got yourself electric one of the best hardcore rock albums there ever was electric has a song average of 4.09 it's got four fives on it, and it's got a bang for your buck of 40. And it does also, it comes right out of the gate with uh, one, two, th- it's got three, it's got three fives in the first four tracks. It's just, it's got a lot of fours on it. It has their most iconic anthem type songs like Wildflower and Little Devil and, and Love Removal Machine. I remember, so I saw... I saw them in concert in in uh, eighty nine, and they they closed with Love Removal Machine. It was at the time it was what they felt was their best song, and it just rocks the house. And I, I you know, as I mentioned, they had that alternative version of this album which was called Peace Here, here's, a th- here, here's something I wanted to interject too is they have this box set album that's really really impressive and it, it's got so many things that they didn't release well actually every, it's almost everything unreleased stuff um, it's just sometimes there are different versions of it and they had completely recorded an album called Peace and it just had a different sound it had, it had that older love and, and dream time sound to it it was not this hard rock when Rick Rubin came in to produce the album he just changed their sound completely he's like they, they kept the songs I would say like 70% of the songs are the same and they're even like the same lyrics and everything it's just the the sound was altered so that it was like, okay, we're badass, and here's some hard electric guitar and some rock and roll. Here we go. And it worked because it was, I think it was a lot more successful than Love, and it really put them kind of, you know, in the, in the mix of all the other hard rock bands at the time. Number four on the list, and this one is mostly my preference. When I did all the metrics for it, It came up, didn't surprise me, but it will probably surprise a lot of you. 
Number four being their self-titled album, The Cult, from 1994. And that had an average song score of 4.27. And it has six fives on it. There's a total bang for your buck of 44 points. The Cult self-titled album, which a lot of people refer to as The Black Sheep, because on the cover it's got like a, a black sheep with horns and whatnot. It, it, this is not as popular for, for some cult fans as others. I find it to have some of the, the most experimental stuff on it that actually resonated with me. I, I, I genuinely loved this album when it came out. I was in college. I played it over and over again. And I used to play it like I'd have people over and I'd play it. And other people didn't give a shit about it. They're like, what is this? And I'm like, it is the cult. Like, it, it doesn't sound like the cult. And I'm like, yeah, they have a different sound now. So they, they, had, they had reimagined themselves and it wasn't successful. And I, I think it had, you know, was, was part of the, the evolution of them breaking up because they broke up after this album, after this tour. And it, it had some, it had a lot of music on it that wasn't iconic, that didn't, you know, wasn't, didn't stand the test of time. But I got to tell you, I listened to these songs over and over again. I mean, there's some truly fan. So Gone, uh, Coming Down Drug Tongue, Real Girl. Saints Are Down is one of those songs where I listen to that over and over again. And that just has like a, a feel to it, like this this ominous, mystic, uh, you know, feel. Universal You is a lot like that, too. Then they have Joy, which y you can definitely see the influence from The Doors. And that's something that was always you. He, Ian Asbury was very, very... Uh, influenced by Jim Morrison, his poetry, his interest in Native Americans, all, all that type of stuff. And, and it's blatantly obvious when you just see even like the, the way he dressed. Oh, and he became the lead singer of The Doors later on, too, if, if you didn't know that. So um, they, they recorded a whole new uh, album and they went on tour as The Doors and Ian Asbury was a lead singer. So, I mean, his influence was obvious. Number three is Beyond Good and Evil. It's a later album, came out in 2001, but they had broken up for, you know, seven years and there wasn't anything going on. And this was kind of like their reintroduction. And boy, does this have like a hard rock sound to it. Like this, this is, this is heavy. This is almost heavy metal. I mean, they, they kind of de, they kind of evolved into a heavier metal sound than they had from the 80s. Beyond Good and Evil has an average song score of 4.33. It's got five fives on it, and it's got a bang for your buck of 44, which is the same as the debut album. Now, Beyond Good and Evil, this is one of those ones where it's like, hey, guess what, guys? We're a heavy metal band now, and we're a damn good hard rock heavy metal band. Check this shit out. And they did like this album, you just listen to the first five songs, and they hit you, and they hit you hard. First song, War, is just this massive anthem. Uh, the Saints popular, but like Rise is probably one of the best songs on this album. And I I still go see them in concert and they always play this song because it's such a powerful song. There's the song Take the Power. Take the Power. I mean, this is the epitome of like a Rage Against the Machine song. Only, you know, it's the cult with it, with, a, with that hard rock sound to it, you know. But you feel like you can take on the universe when you hear this song. It's just got so much power. And then they do have one of their slower songs in Nico, uh, which is great. But I mean, I could run through this whole album like. Shape the shape the sky. <laughs> That's an awesome, awesome song. Speed of lights, great. I mean, just this is just one of those hidden gem albums that if you if you do like the cult, this needs to be part of your portfolio of albums because you can sit and play the whole thing straight through. Number two 
For anybody that's not familiar with the cult and you want to introduce them to the cult, Sonic Temple is a perfect intro album for anybody new to the cult. It's got some of their most iconic songs on it. It has an average song score of 4.36 out of 5, of course. And that has six total number fives on it. And it has a bang for your buck of 44, just like the three right before it. Sonic Temple, now this is this is the one that's the most well-known album of theirs. It's really what put them on the map. Uh, it made them a headliner when Sonic Temple came out. I mean, you know, this was in the heyday of M MTV videos, and they had come out with their Fire Woman video that just was like, who the hell are these guys? These are, I mean, and that's a hard rock song. So they came out, did that, and it had this very specific look to it. And then especially with like Ian and Billy with their long hair, super, super straight, long ass hair, uh, doing their thing, doing their mystical thing. It was just... I mean, and there's a handful of songs on here that are that are unbelievable. Edie Baby and, and and Sweet Soul Sister were ones that were you know I think they made videos for those, so those those were known. But they have a song, and I'm surprised this song isn't a more popular song, probably because it's it's one of those more ominous, like slower type rhythms. But a uh, Soul Asylum is. One of I th I think it's probably their top. It's it's one of their top three, at least their top five songs. Best song on this album, hands down. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even close. But, you know, then you got like, you know, Soldier Blue, Atomic Blues, New York City. I mean, th these are really, really great songs. And the number one greatest cult album. I knew this was going to be number one. I, I didn't really have to do all the math to figure this out uh, just because it's always been my favorite. And I believe it to be the greatest rock and roll album ever. Cult Love is uh it's just a superb it's it's a perfect album i should say go ahead blow up the comments disagree with me all you want i know this is a uh you know a little more under the radar this is you know a kind of a cult classic no pun intended but this album is unreal. It, it has an average song score of 4.44. It has seven fives on it. And it has a total bang for your buck of 45. If you go across the board, it's just five, 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 five. There's two fours in there. And then the last track is the weak track. That's the one that could have brought it down, but it wasn't enough because it just had so many fives and fours on it. it it's absolutely perfect. Uh, th there's just so much unique influence involved in this. I mean, still their older sound when they were, they kind of had that new wave, but they, they jettisoned the punk a little bit and were more of like a groovy rock, but with like kind of a, a the cure twist to it. But is if, imagine if the cure were a bunch of badasses, that's, that's kind of what this album sounds like. And you go like the first three songs right out of the gate, you're like, bam, bam, bam. They're all good rock, like new wave sounding rock songs that I could listen to over and over and over again. And then they get to the fourth song, which is Brother Wolf, Sister Moon. That's a slow song that I just, I loved it the first time I heard it. I would play it over and over and over again on a loop. And then uh, She Sells Sanctuary. I, I had She Sells Sanctuary play at my wedding when they introduced my wife and I to, to our guests. So they, they played that lead up like Just the lead up, it was a great build up. So they, and the cult being my favorite band, I was like, we're we're being introduced to the cult, honey. She was cool with it. It was good to go. Um, thank God. <laughs> but that, you know, I, 
That's one of the most perfectly written songs I think I've ever heard. It should be my one of my favorite songs of theirs. It's just there's just so, there's ten songs where I'm like, oh my god, I love oh, I love this, I love that. Like they're all just so good. This one falls in there somewhere. But when I dissect it, it really is one of the most perfectly written songs. And also, too, they they did, I think this was in like 2008 or two, oh, 2009. 2009, they did the Love Tour where, because there was some popularity that it still was still there for this specific album. And they did a tour where they played this album in its entirety in order you know, and then, you know, you get there's 10 songs on the album. So they got past that and then they played some more songs in their encore. But it's it was just so awesome. So awesome to see. And, and they sounded just like they did back in 85 when they came out with this album. And that, my friends, is the 11 The Cult albums ranked from worst to best. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you, I, I assume most of you, you know, know the cult. That's why you're watching this video. But if you are one of those people that has not checked out the cult, uh, I really think it's in your best interest to check out the cult. It's a band that's you know not going to disappoint. This was one where I just I knew good and goddamn well that love was going to be number one. It was not a surprise by the time I got to that on the list. So. There you have it. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Foxy Sellers. If you would, go ahead, click the subscribe, click like, go ahead, comment, especially if you have ideas, comments, differing opinions about things like, you know, this song versus that album being where it was on the list. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.